All right, just drop a one in the chat if you can hear me clearly. Just the canal, right? This is what I'm currently looking at, but I'm gonna let big hop on. All right.
All right, guys, good morning. It's Vic here. We're about to get started in just one minute. transfer app. All right, perfect, guys. So as you guys can see, everybody can hear me, everybody can see me clearly. Well, not me, but the screen, right? Just type a one in the chat, just to make sure. Perfect, perfect. So as you guys can see, at 8.30 in the morning, we do have news. So we're gonna be careful, it's Friday. So our bias for the week isn't really gonna be 100%. Meaning um, most of the weekly range candle so when we go to the weekly candle, all right, this candle opened up on Monday. Monday is trading, right? <laughs> what you're doing on Monday, right, is you're basically predicting whether this candle is going to close bullish or bearish, right? That's basically the whole model between what I trade, right? And that's because this is on the weekly. So the weekly has the whole trading range in it built in. And you see how each weekly candle <laughs> either closes bearish or it closes bullish, right? So just knowing really just the direction on the weekly is gonna improve your trading by at least 80%. Cause you're gonna be at least on the wrong, you're gonna be on the right side of the market most of the time, if you know the weekly um, bias. So we've been selling off. Um, one of the rules I have is once we have three to four bearish days, bearish closes, I'm really not looking for no sales today. Um, we had swept equal lows down here that we were looking for. So I am looking to be bullish today, especially since we see that. So while we took equal lows on S&P, we failed to do that on NASDAQ. Now that's something we want to point out, right? Because NASDAQ is held back right now. Now, since we have news at 8.30, that could be something that makes NASDAQ catch back up. But The thing is, if we're bullish, we don't want to see this come back down here, right? So if anything, this is S&T divergence, meaning we're not going to take the high on here. So we're accumulating longs. And we had the stop run over here. So that's called S&T divergence. So S&T divergence, basically what it means is the underlying trend that we've had so far is is... It's not going to happen. It's, it's, it's most likely to reverse. Now, if these both had the lows taken, that's not SMT divergence. That means they're moving in correlation, and it's more likely that we start seeing more and lower pricing. But since we're seeing this clear SMT divergence, 
I'm a fan of being bullish today. Being bullish above these highs, take out this whole cell, this whole weekly range of cells. So we'll see. So I'm just establishing my bias, right? I want to see what's in the market, what the keys are in the market, what's happened yesterday, what's happened for London. That's going to give me my bias for today. Don't really want to be selling, then buying, then taking a loss, then switching your bias. You don't really want to do that. If anything, if we're bullish and we missed an entry, we want to be looking for the same bullish entry to keep going up higher. We don't want to be switching bias. Perfect. So we opened up on London, came into a discount as soon as we opened up on London. And SP. Previous day's high. So we're always targeting either, either the previous day's low or the previous day's high. So the market on the weekly, right, is either going to take out this high or it's either going to run back and take out this low. Those are the two long-term and the only two long-term plays that can occur, right? Because markets are either going to go for buy side or sell side, right? So we had this run up away from taking sell side, right? After taking the lows, we had this run up. We took out a previous swing high, right? What did I tell you guys? Once we come up and take out a previous swing high, that's your breaking structure. I'm gonna start marking things up too so you guys can see that. So we had our breaking structure during London. During London, they brought this down, added more buys, and now they're bringing this back up. If we zoom in, we start seeing the picture more clearly. We have a market imbalance in here for value gap. So price came down, came up. Sellers thought this was support, brought it down. They didn't know the bias market from this from this move down here, from this low to this high that move is what created this imbalance. So that's an inefficiency. So market leaves kind of like a gap in here and it has to reprice to that and make the market efficient again, you can say. So I can't leave that open. That's why you see me narrating these imbalances in here. These imbalances have certain characteristics to them. They have to have those certain characteristics to them or they won't work. You know, you can't just pull out a random, you know, space of a candle inside and call that uh, an imbalance or an efficiency. There has to be a reason why and a motive. I'm in here, perfectly filled it in. When you take these imbalance trades like this for the buys, for small scalps, um, you're always gonna put your stop loss, by the way, um, below the candle that created the inefficiency. So it's super easy. So anytime you ever see us, um trading inefficiencies the proper way of managing the risk on this is literally just putting your stop loss right here if you guys can see that i'm gonna show you guys so london open would have came in right price would have traded below the lows you see the big shoot up you see that we didn't come into this high yet to take out this high and it's more likely because we have equal highs right here and you swipe lows and we left an imbalance inside of here right so all these things you're talking to yourself while it's happening because price is going to keep moving while you're thinking. So you need to react quick and make your, make your mind up quick, right? So on the higher time frame we have this imbalance. On the five minute, we have this fair value gap. And then we have an order block. So one, two, and three. Three down candles before the up move, right? Came in. You can either, for added security or added confidence, you can even draw a fib and take it right at below the equilibrium or at the 62% right here.
and then you take the higher. So all this, doing all this before getting to the main price action, narrating what happened in London so you understand what's going on and how they're stacking buys in here, that's what's going to get you on the right side. It's not just opening up the charts and going straight. Unless you've been up for London, you've got to go back and, and see what they did at London and what they look to do for New York. Yep, so we took low, came back into the efficiency. See, this is, this is them engineering liquidity, right? So this is them engineering that bias, slowly just creating that low bringing the market back up, diving it into the inefficiency. We have a rejection block right here as well. We can call that a bullish breaker because we had a low, a high, a lower low, broke the high, came back into it. So that's a classic um, bullish breaker pattern. I'm not gonna do that right now, but. A breaker bar, yeah. A breaker, a bullish breaker, um, breaker bar, whatever you wanna call it. So that's what that is. So we're looking, we're running above the highs right now. So let's just mark that up. So now that I know, I usually don't mark this up like this. I'm just looking at it in my head and, and knowing that it's there. But on the live, you guys will see me annotate it so you guys can see my reasoning in, inside of my head. So we know we have the breaker bar here and we're inside of that fair value gap. So I'm gonna leave that there. So optimal entries inside of here or somewhere along here to get out above here, here, and here, All right? So now that we know that, that's the move that we were looking for at around six in the morning, 6.30, we weren't up, right? What's the probability now that if we run these highs right here and we get some sort of confirmation to go for these highs and then this high to close in this whole move that already happened on NASDAQ. So on NASDAQ, I remember clearly the move that we had for CPI, we closed it in already. Yep, see, this is the move that happened for CPI, right? This is why I said don't trade NASDAQ this week. It's been very held back. We had the move drop down and immediately that same day, we closed in the, the liquidity void. So as soon as this candle is right here, this whole thing is a liquidity void. We closed it in perfectly, right? Look at that. Close it in perfectly, mitigated all the sellers in here. And we've been literally choppy ever since. We haven't been moving outside of that range. All right. Look at that. So because I see that SP is still late for that, they're both kind of late for that. They haven't taken out this high yet, which is what I'm looking for on the daily. Since we ran those already and we have that institutional accumulation and with both of them, we're looking to take out that high. So if we do get a run up right now above this high, not this one, this one is too uh, short term. If we get a run up above this high or a nice little retracement, either back in here or back in here somewhere, we'll see, we'll catch that buy since we're confirming that our bias is bullish now. If there's any pairs you guys want me to look at, I'll also take a look at that. Just type it in the chat. I know, I forgot who it was, called out GJ yesterday and we got a nice trade on GJ. I don't like Euro. Euro was just ugly. So we're not going to look at Euro, but let's see one thing. I want to see what we did for London. Those made lows, ran up, previous short term high, break of structure came in, 
order block shot up, took out the high, took out the high. EU, yeah, we're looking at it right now. <laughs> Might be running this high, previous day's high right here. Um, whenever we see the opportunity, mainly um, we're not looking right now, right now, because we just came out of London session. Well, the main activity during London session and um, there's 830 news. So price usually likes to um, just consolidate until those news releases. So during those news releases, it's best to just sit back, identify higher time frame premium discount arrays, see where the market may just jump to and reprice to, and be ready for that news release. I don't like it because it is core retail sales, two red folders. We saw what happened with core CPI. So, you know, even if you have a nice trade and it's up a quite a bit, you know, you can still get wiped out. News really have only been like, like news has been really um, impactful this week. Like I remember last week for non-farm payroll NFP, um, we didn't really have anything like that. It was just really sloppy and you couldn't really hold on to a move. It was more so just scalping in and out and in and out. But it wasn't like this where as soon as news 830, boom, you get a crazy reaction. No, it wasn't like that. So this is a previous day's high. We've run that. We have this imbalance in here, I see, on the one hour. above all these equal highs right here. So we'll take a look at that. Yeah, like you shall say, when the opportunity presents itself, we're in there. Yeah, so US 30 looks a little more clear on the fact that <clears throat> we've had four bearish closes, ran the lows already. So that gives me more indication that we might be bullish across all three pairs. <laughs> Yeah, especially with how close NASDAQ is to closing this whole range in. A 
SCP's range is the bear. London was really nice. London had a lot of clear premium discount arrays and it was moving quite quick. Just writing main liquidity swipe because although we didn't take out the wick, the bulk of the volume, the bulk of the trades are inside of the bodies of the candle. So we did swipe liquidity here. Triggered sell stops right after this move right here. And we brought the market out, short term breaking structure. So now we can look to trade this range in. 1710, preferably just want a discount inside of here to take that trade. So this is probably gonna consolidate in here. So this is gonna be a manipulation, um, I mean, uh, consolidation, manipulation down, and then a distribution up. It's one of my favorite models. So we'll see, we got this. I may like this. I mean, it's a little too early to say, but 8.30, if we had like a nice down move that just swiped right into here, that would be beautiful. Because then we buy that right away. Buy, I mean, buyers are really too scared to buy when it's selling down like that, so close to the lows. We buy that and then take it all the way up. <clears throat> if we get that here, we might even do that. It's moving quite a bit. Although we have this lower low down here to the right, to the left. This is an order block. But London, we priced in a discount. Engineers low, swipe lows. We're in a way. I think you want to just wait a little bit because this isn't a clearly defined order block because we took so long to get in 5 10 15 20 25 30 35 minutes really an order block is a 
sponsorship of price. You can see that institutions came in there, placed their buys in there. So when price comes back, as you see right here, price came back into the order block, price has some sort of reaction from it. But this was just slow. We're gonna wait. It doesn't look. It doesn't look like a smart money reversal to me. We went above, yes, but at the same time that we went above these highs and we took those buy stops, we have to understand the logic that we just came into a discount on the one hour I saw, and we might want to bring this down a bit because breakout buyers were in profit right here and they were just not in that much profit. They were getting held up while they were accumulating sales. So <clears throat> the sales accumulated in here are going to mitigate these buys inside of a premium somewhere in here. So we're going to see what they do right now. Um, it doesn't really matter how many times we mitigate this order block. I can come in there freaking eight times, you know, I've seen. Um, it's all about just knowing the bias. So the bias right now is yes. We either gonna take out this low, or we're gonna go for this high, London's high. Um, I like us going for London's high better because of this breaking structure right here and how we just swipe lows coming into the order block. That all just adds up, it adds up to being bullish. And the fact that they would bring that down during London just to get their orders in before New York you have to understand um when you trade new york session you're trading about 50 to yeah 50 to 100 percent of the rest of daily bulk meaning um when we open up this is when the new daily candle opens up right at 12 a.m before london session right we trade london session basically until four or five in the morning so you're already six, seven, eight hours in to the daily candle before you even wake up, right? You only got about three, four hours to execute in the morning during New York session. And then you've got about two hours in the PM session. So you've only got about six hours, right? So out of those six hours, you're looking at 24 minus six. So you only got about, what is that? I'm bad at math. 18, 16, 16 hours left, 18 hours left to like, I mean, like 16, 18 hours that you're not going to be looking at the daily range or catching it unless you're swing trading and you're just letting it run. You've only got four to six hours to catch some of the move inside the daily candle, inside the daily range. Five times. We have this main high up here, though. So this could be the premium before we go up higher. But this is all like a trend line. Now, I don't trade trend lines. I'm just delineating <clears throat> that retail traders, as they trade, they draw these and they're buying inside of this and then their stop losses go here so once we swipe buys and we have a reaction like this where's the liquidity so it's right in here
I like the cell right here. It's a really small stop loss though. Yeah, we're gonna take a cell here. Everybody sell S&P, 0.5% risk. It's a really small stop loss. It's right above this, it's four handles. So, I mean, if you throw like a hundred lot on MMF, it's only like $400. It's a really tight stop loss. We're just gonna see if this is gonna be the run above the short-term highs right here. And we're gonna close in this trend line. We're selling inside of this for value gap right here. And our TP is about 37.95. Stop loss is only four, four handles. <laughs> Yeah, I'll show you how, how I draw a premium discount right after this. So I kind of want to see NASDAQ get there quicker, giving S&P that sort of, hey, catch up. Don't want to really see it close above this. See what we got here. Um, yes, that's final TP. Because after that, I don't know what we're gonna do. This is a short-term model, I'm a scalper. So that's gonna be final TP. Of course, once you're in blues, it's on you. So once we get there, you can partial or do whatever you want. You can hold, but my advice is close. <laughs> Always close at least 80%, right? Got you, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you can enter now. The optimal entry is up here, but that's only one handle away. So yeah, you can enter now. Our stop loss goes kind of above this high. And your TP goes down here. Now, of course, exactly what I'm looking for is this imbalance right here. I'm looking for us to not close this in. I'm guessing that's what we're playing off of.
Is anybody else's screen frozen right here? Oh, okay. I don't know why it does that to me. It'll like take 10, 10 seconds literally before I see the next candle open. <laughs> Because we didn't take that those highs that we took on SP, we didn't take on NASDAQ. Let's see how um, how much we want to move here. I want to see us move quickly down, like right now. We came back into the imbalance, 15 minute candles open. <laughs> I want to see us just tear down. I want to see no consolidation in here because all this liquidity shouldn't need a consolidation. It should just be a quick move. Give me one minute, guys. I'll be right back.
All right, I'm back, guys. We're kind of just waiting for this. I'm giving it like five minutes to take out this low right here because we just opened up a five minute candle. So we want to see that sponsorship from the institutions. We want to see it just being held up, not seeing that sponsorship from our level away from this high. Once we get to about 3,800, big figure, just here in a minute, we'll start moving our stop loss down. But um, always be always be um, be ready, guys. Because if we get some sort of like jump up into here, I wouldn't really like that. It's a it's acceptable, you know, a little wick up above again, accumulate just one more time, and then just really just next candle has to really just drop. But if we come in here and we just slowly, just inch up, inch up, inch up, and then inch up, inch up. That's that means they're gonna just accumulate buys in here and send it up higher, which makes no sense to me. So I don't see them doing that. Looks like we're going down on S&P as well. Your entry should be in profit, especially, I know somebody got in late, right above, even better. Looks like we're getting that breakdown now. When we get to 3,800, it's about a one to two. And then I'm it's about a one to one to eight down here at the target. Now I know you guys trade US 30, so you guys get like hundreds of handles more. That's why you have to enter smaller lot sizes, at least with my Forex funds on my side. So I tend to throw higher lot sizes on SP. So for example, like 10 handles, I have I have understood that. If you have, for example, a $100,000 account, I know most of us are trying to pass accounts. So if you have a $100,000 account, a 100 lot, so a 100.00 um, is $1,000 every 10 handles. So if you sold at one at 8303 and you got down to 793, which is, I mean, in my understanding, that's a total, totally respectable range. It's not something that, if you risk that, it's going to wipe you out, you know, it's a nice risk. And then that to me is like 1%, you know, whereas on a US 30, if it moves a hundred handles, a hundred pips, it's basically like a 10 lies, a thousand dollars. So it's a little different. This is basically another area to stack cells right in here. As soon as we touch this. I'd be selling again. Handles is pips. Just, just whenever I say handles, it's pips. When I'm on Forex pairs or Forex or gold, I'm going to say pips because it's just what I'm used to. And then this is like handles to me. It's just, you know, my term. It's what I'm comfortable with. 
we count R. Yeah, man. I mean, I really don't, I don't count R, but I go, I just go by since I run like my own funded account, I go by percentages. So I'll risk a certain percentage to make a certain percentage. And um, that's that. I always go for about 10 handles, 20 handles, which is 10, 20 pips. No, I didn't. I just have one position right here at 8303. I mean, if we come into here right now, I probably will add another position. It's always about 50% of this. And um, if I'm doing long-term trading, I'll always take it out right away, right here. And I'll leave my top position good. Yeah, so I just took another sell right here, 8301. I don't wanna see this close above. So I wanna see that. Just close this in and dump. We just opened up eight o'clock candle, so it's not bad. Tonight, the music's in the See, like, if we would have missed this entry, this would have been my second entry. So that's why I kind of trust it. We want to stay below this five minute order block. I want to stay below that five minute order block, right? So we're going to move our stop loss down to three, eight, three, oh six. So we moved it down from above the high to eight, three, oh six. And we want to stay below this five minute order block. I love this filling. So you see how we filled that imbalance in perfectly. And now we're going down. I want to see us continue that. Us going back above this high is very bullish and very weird, weird to be bullish. So let's see what we got here. I wanna see just rip down. Once we get into 8.30, 9.30, this is, the market's gonna start moving a lot faster because this is not really fast at all. This five minute candle should just rip down. We tap the five minute OB, so we want to see that just drop. Remember what I said, in order for this to be a swing high, we have to close 50% below this candle right here. So us tagging into it's okay, right? That's just adding cells. But then we want to see followed by a sudden movement down. Oh, so I'm guessing R is like percentages in my, for my example, right? So if we're risking one R, that's 1% or what? I think Don knows how to explain it. No, 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 no. We don't close before 830. We're gonna see, we might, we might, because we wanna see first where we get there, at least by 815. We'll see where we're at if we just keep dropping. But right now we're not, we're holding. And if you sold in here, you should have sold with 50% of the position you usually would have entered in here.
we're getting a nice breakdown already. What I wanted to see, what I told you guys I wanted to see first was the breakdown of that low on NASDAQ first. Beautiful. That simply means that S&P kind of has to say, hey, I got to catch up because they correlate. And we don't want to see it close above this high now because we had two, consec two consecutive candles going up, two consecutive bullish candles. Let me see if I can hide this real quick. So we had two consecutive bullish candles coming up. That means as it's going up, smart money is selling. So we don't want to see a candle break this. And we just opened up a five minute candle. So let's see. Okay, perfect. Then yeah, so you'll understand me. I'll start saying, I guess one percent. I'm like, <laughs> I'm not used to saying when I. I always say, I always tell you how much to risk before we still we start the trade. I'll say either 0.5 percent or one percent. So you guys should immediately just translate translate percentage to one R, two R, three R, four R, five R, all that. All right, we're breaking down. We'll move our stop loss just a little bit more down to, um, we'll micromanage. So 8305.5. Once we take this low, I mean, mainly this low down here, we'll start um, taking some profits. And that's a beautiful trade, honestly, guys. Managed beautifully. We got the re entry, right? If you listen to me and you got that beautiful re entry, that was beautiful. Why do you prefer institutional style trading? I mean, look, <laughs> pretty easy, right? Once you understand the logic, it's just um, aligning yourself with the algorithm, right? The algorithm is never wrong, right? So it's always just you. So it's just aligning yourself. Yeah, we're gonna start just seeing this break down fast, I believe. Beautiful. It's a nice move to catch once we take the slow out. That's a nice move to catch before 8.30. We want to see this just keep going down, right? No stopping. All right. This was a bearish breaker as well. I know somebody knows what a, I know people in here know what a um, a breaker block is. So we had taken out the slow, this creates the low, new high, taken out the high, came down, this becomes your breaker block. So as soon as we came down into it, you can either sell off the fair value gap here, or you can sell off the breaker block. Look at that, perfect. That's the type of precision I'm looking for in the trading to confirm, because it's that type of precision that you'll always see if you, if you trade like this. Want to see this just keep breaking down we came into the um premium discount of the five minute or what is that the 15 minute fair value gap in here i'll start cleaning this up a little bit so you guys can see a little better that was the trend line that we're looking to mitigate any buyers that were along that
Yeah. So I want to I want to see us just really rip through this because this is the premium discount how uh, premium discount high of that, and it looks like we're tearing down right now, right? Yeah. Beautiful, right? Look at that precision. <laughs> it's freaky stuff. I mean, it's insane. Beautiful. All right, guys, we're gonna move our stop loss to entry now. Once we take out this low and this low, um, I always like to secure at least 25% before we take out this low, the main low. So I mean, you guys should go do that now. Take at least 25% now. And then once, as soon as we take out this low right here, you guys can start just securing your whole position, right? Uh, we're managing as we go along. Now, if you're, if you're at work or something like that, you're gonna set the TP and hope for the best. Yes, exactly. That's why we that's why we went break even. We always want to wait though, right? So I waited for this. As soon as I saw this confirm, I know smart money is in there. We shouldn't really see a run up up here anymore, right? So we secured twenty five percent at this low, and you're gonna secure anywhere from fifty to the whole position as soon as we get down to this low. about to open up we're inside a five minute candle so we have three minutes on this five minute candle that wants to go down and we're about to open up a 15 minute candle in three minutes um win rate is really personal because there's a difference between win rate and profit profitability when you're with a funded account and like let's say you get um for example you catch this trade right here right from 306 307 all the way down to the low let's say for example that's a 1 to 10 or 1 to 20 or 1 to 30 right one of those big nice moves right once you see that your win rate can be affected because you take small losses probably on the way there right the small losses kind of wake you up to the real move like what's really happening so, I mean, you could have three small losses, right? For like 0.1, 0.5% each, and then make that big move that makes you five, six, 7%. So I've, I've seen that win rates don't really matter in some cases. You can have a 50% win rate and be really profitable. You don't really wanna go under 50% though. You wanna be right more than wrong most of the time. And that simply means you wanna just patiently wait for your setups, right? And when you see your setup, you take it. Now, uh, remember guys, we are break even. We secured 25% of the position below the slow, just because this is kind of like obvious, but this is equal lows. So higher time frame, higher time frame should have respected and swiped that. So I don't really have anything to worry, I'm holding. I don't see this just jumping up before we take this. And I think that'll be the only trade we take for the next 15 minutes. So we'll just hold that until TP and wait for 8.30. Remember when, I, remember when we were up here and I said, we got about 15 minutes to get down. That's what you always wanna be talking to yourself and looking through. You don't wanna be up here 15 minutes later, still waiting, you know? That's just a big red no. You always want to time it. I don't know if you guys ever seen movies about um, the old times when they used to trade without computers and it was just in the pit at the New York Stock Exchange, Chicago Stock Exchange. Um, and they're just screaming numbers and looking at their notepads and tablets and looking at the time. That's all what professional traders do at, at those big levels. They're looking for specific levels to get hit at specific times. And if those levels don't get hit at specific times, they're noting that down. And that's when they usually switch buys. What's the difference between smart money and institutional? 
Um, it's usually the same thing, but give me one thing, guys. One minute, guys. I'll be right back. So we opened up the last 15 minute candle before 8.30. So we just came into the, the area where we rebalanced. If we start going above this, we're gonna start securing some of our position in case we do start coming back up here. Cause we don't wanna see that right before 8.30. US 30 has been really held back. I mean, <clears throat> we came into this revive gap to taking out the lows. The displacement has just been really slow. Ever since we got inside ours, you know, we had that fast displacement. So you always want to look at the three pairs. And I'm going to start showing Kisha because I know Kisha just loves US 30, but you always want to see the differences between the three. They're always different on certain days and they're all going to confirm the move differently. Beautiful. We got our move. We can start taking profits now, 75 to hundred percent of the move. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. You guys already know Vic, the kid underscore underscore on IG, a simple, take a picture, show the trade executed beautifully. Basically got no drawdown, right? We got about two, three minutes of drawdown. We knew exactly our levels, right? We knew exactly where we we're going to go down. We knew our time restraint. We won it before 8.30. And we got our re-entries. Anybody that came in late, she got her re-entry, I'm pretty sure. And it was beautiful. Um, Jonathan will have the 11, uh, uh, so early my tongue be getting twisted. We'll have the 11 a.m. call if we see some nice movement during um, 8.30, right? Beautiful move. So if you took 75%, you can just hold the rest of the 25%. Um, Let's see, you can close 25, the rest of the 25% of the whole position at 3794, right? So the bottom of that fair value gap. That was a beautiful trade. And it was really high probability. So these are the trades where I, I'm, I'm kind of risking 1% on that whole trade. So I'm risking, this is like a 1% risk to make about, you know, two, three, 4%, depending where I take profit or how many partials I take. Yeah, so if you risk 2%, so if, 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 if from the entry to here it was 2%, you're up about four to five. Beautiful. Nice risk, Kishel. Kishel be bringing them accounts back to life. I'm just managing this, right? So if we respect this, 
or if we don't even come into closing, we just keep dropping. That's institutional money is right there. Quality work, yep. Great trade. Beautiful trade. Um, it's gonna depend on, um, look at that, beautiful. It's gonna depend on 8.30 news, right? So in 10 minutes, we're gonna see how much the market displaces. Now, it's if it's something similar to what happened on Wednesday, we won't. We'll wait until 1 p.m., 2 p.m. Because we know after the big moves, the market's gonna consolidate. All right, so there's a saying when you when you trade institutional money, you, there's a saying there's always a move and you never miss anything, right? There's always a move, always a move. There's there's thirty different markets we can choose from, right? If we're really you know scratching our necks looking for a trade, <laughs> look at that, right? So definitely right now you should secure the rest of your twenty five percent. Your whole trade should be off at this point, and that was a great trade, guys. I mean, I wouldn't really say that, Dennis. If you've been trading long enough, you know that NFP NFP week is usually the most um, frightful week of the of the whole month. I opt out to not trade the whole week because NFP to me stands for not for professionals. So I'm a professional trader. I'm not going to trade on NFP week. You know, uh, how many trades are you willing to take? during the session before you don't trade anymore. It's the similar to shell. So about four, three, three or four or five trades. It all depends on your risk. It depends how you feel during those trades that you took, right? So if, for example, if we took this trade and like pussied out, for example, or like bitched out, like that would have been something where I'm like, all right, I'm feeling like, I'm not feeling confident in my trading right now. Let me limit down my losses to about two, you know, or three, or let me let me let me uh, limit down my risk, right? Sheesh, look at your gold. Um, we haven't taken a gold trade. I was looking for gold to come down into this. We could probably. I mean, it's too too soon because we're about to have news in seven minutes. So I would wait. Just real quick, right? We have 33 people on here. Drop a one if you took that and um, S&P trade. And drop a two if you took the S&P trade and you got a re-entry when I called it in here. Beautiful, beautiful. One and two. iPhone caught one and two. Beautiful. Two, two. Two came late and got the re-entry. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. So most of you guys caught it. That's what I love to see. Love that. So yeah, we're going to wait until 8.30, right? And yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll be back in about two minutes. I'm going to do something.
All right, guys, I'm back. With about three minutes left, we caught a beautiful trade, right? So we're not going to overtrade. We're not going to give back our profits. Um, look at that reaction, right? That's why we always TP. Look at that TP we had. Beautiful TP. That's why we always TP. You always pay the trader. Right? And we knew that we wanted to have this move right before 830, which was perfect because we didn't want to get caught up in that volatility. So everything about that trade was perfect. And we chose the right pair. We didn't go into NASDAQ because it didn't take out the main highs. We didn't go into US 30 because it was moving too sloppy and slow. So we took the right pair, we executed and we took it out perfectly. We're just waiting here. We got one minute left. Let's see what the market wants to give us. We're selling pretty hard on NASDAQ. Euro's moving too slow. We're not going to look at Euro. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Eight thirty. Looks like we're selling down on that. Is that ooh, ooh? Look at that. Frankly. If I was still in this trade, I would not want to be in that. Yes, US 30 is the top 30 um, stocks at value. S&P 500 is the 500 that follow and NASDAQ 100 is the 100 that follow. I'm pretty sure US 30 is mainly tech. And then NASDAQ is like oil, stuff like that, pharmaceutical. And S&P is all the above, all the other. So this point right here to sell wasn't bad. This would have been a nice sell. But um, we overshot it on NASDAQ. We overshot it on US 30. Came into this one though up here a little bit. So S&P really has been the best pair today. We're not going to look at any of the other pairs, only as a barometer. So when those pairs reach their take profits, their target levels, for example, like NASDAQ closed in London low. If NASDAQ closed in London low, we're going to look for S&P to close in London low as well. Just a big move, yes but it can happen easily. So let's see. Um, GJ, yeah, uh, look at GJ. See, that's why we wait. We bounced in around this premium level that we would have bought in, but I didn't want to take that. I mean, if, if what was the GJ trade? It was a sell or why I didn't look at it. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not looking at the chat. Just tell me real quick if it was a sell or what. So, um, 
I mean, yeah, it's selling. If they caught the sell and you didn't get taken out, you're doing pretty good. But I mean, this wick up is like 10 pips, you know, and your stop loss usually is above here if you took it. Let me see. The stop loss was at 468, so that trades in profit. Got in a, got in a little bit, two hours. Let me see that. Got in like right here. Not bad. 10 pip drawdown. Stop loss is above the high right here. Not bad. If you got in at the entry, I mean, that's a beautiful train. We call them the two hour time frame. Yeah, I mean, you can use any time frame. It is, it is, it's, it's what do you see, you know? It's, it's what you see. Yeah. Smart money accumulation in there, heavy. Tapped it. It could go for this low and this low easily. So if you took that entry, I mean, good trade, Rusty. I mean, would have waited a little bit. I mean, I don't know who Rusty is, but I think that's one of Kishel's friends I think I saw. He took out a low already. I'll probably go for this one. Kind of already did. They're like 20 pips in profit from entry. So, I mean, the thing is, when you take a trade at news open, it's always going to be, you know, choppy or in, in some sort of drawdown. It's just really, if you have the correct bias, you're going to be good. The market's going to reprice your bias, no matter how choppy or whatever. So dollars shooting up like that is going to give gold the way to go down. I'm about to tell Swipe liquidity again, came right into the order block again. If we're bearish, we don't want to see it go above this high. Well, we're not taking any trades right now. I'm just talking to myself on what if and what, what I would do. So I'm just narrating things because these are premium discount arrays and if they don't get respected, then I'm ca I can align myself the correct way and start identifying the correct premium discount arrays. You guys see how when we swipe highs and lows that are major, there's usually a a reaction you guys when you guys back test or tape read i think you guys call that go back into the charts into previous weeks and identify setups um this is what you want to look for like on the one hour you, you want to note um one hour highs and lows that you believe are like um obvious like this this you know and you want to see what happens when those lows get taken out and what time those lows get taken out, like this one got taken out right for New York session, eight and 9 a.m. So those aren't by accident. You know, those moves usually happen during, during New York session or London session. So the more you train your eyes and your mind to see those at specific times, the more you're going to trust those trades as you see them in the future. See, so we didn't respect this. Instead, what we did was we filled it in, we, we filled it in, right? And then we rebalanced it, meaning we just came right back into it, rebalanced it in, filled it in, and then we bought up, right? So that was bullish, but it's pretty fast price, price action. It's too fast to call out. Yes, my favorite days to trade are Monday, or not really Monday, let me not say that, Tuesday 
and Wednesday. Because Tuesday and Wednesday, although I'm a scalper and although I short-term trade, if you catch a move Tuesday and Wednesday, you can usually hold it Thursday and Friday without trouble until the weekly candle closes. So Tuesday and Wednesday. Doesn't really happen on Monday because Monday open, you have Sunday's price action, Sunday gaps. It's, it's less high probability. That trade was fast. See how it reacted. It didn't react anywhere else except for here. There's a reason for that. Intraday. Scalper and intraday are the same thing, in my opinion. Oh, I like to enter my trade same day and get out the same day. So see, this is why we take profits, right? S&P came all the way back up. Everybody should have taken their profits. No greed, right? That was a beautiful move. It was 30, came back up. So DXY swiping down like that, what do you think? Why do you think gold shot up? All right? So you have to be looking at that. Like if you're trading gold and you want to start learning to trade gold heavily, you have to master correlation between DXY, the dollar index and gold, right? So as gold was coming down, so you time it, right? So 832, 833, 834, gold was, I mean, DXY was coming up, 830, 831, 832, 833, 834. As soon as 835 happened, what happened on both? Boom, boom. So 835 candle opened, it shot up. As soon as it took the low, right? And DXY took some highs, came down as soon as 835. So that's as soon as you see that, that's like so major that like, Usually when I'm trading by myself and I'm really, really focused, I'll, I'll spot that right away. Yeah, I would spot that right away, honestly, if I was looking at that. And I would say, all right, gold's going bullish. You know, look at that, perfect. So that's a huge thing you guys have to look at and start, especially if you trade gold or even like the Euro, or GBP, USD, anything with like a US dollar pair. And it's crazy because you see that correlation in the exact timing, like 832, 833, 834. As soon as 835 happened, both of them opposite directions, 837, 838, 837, 838. As soon as it hit TP, it stopped at the low. It's not, it's not random, guys. That's what I want you guys to understand. Like these markets aren't random. They're already pre-coordinated. There's levels, there's levels the market has built in to be traded to. It sounds crazy. Yes, it sounds crazy. But when you learn from people that know, they teach you. I don't know what Kishel wants to do. I mean, I know what I want to do. I really don't want to trade right now after this. We caught a nice move. I kind of don't want to give back my nice hard-earned profits. Let's see. We have 9 a.m. news. And then we have 10 a.m. news. Consumer sentiment. Yeah, nice move on a Friday, right? Until 2 p.m. LOL. <laughs> oh, well. I mean, we can stay on until 9. Maybe 9.15. We'll see. I don't want to jump into anything unless we see something really nice. Yeah, 
yeah, if you want, you guys can leave now and join us back at 2. I'll probably stay on right now until 9. See what's up. We just had news. We'll hop back on at 2 with Kishel. GBP, JPY is very choppy, as you guys can see. If you took that trade, you should have exited it at the low. So I always like to take most of my profits at the low. Trust me, sometimes we will let those trades run. But in order to let it run, there has to be a, a, re, a, a deep logic. It can't be on a Friday. It has to be on a Tuesday or Thursday where, you know, if, for example, if we're targeting the slow, we know that there's smooth price action here. I know Kishel loves that on US 30. Once you guys take out that low, you know that's going to just run easily like butter. All right. We're going to clean this up. What a beautiful trade off that. See how this is the bulk of the volume? And we came right down to it. Look at that. There's a reason for that. Like, it's crazy even when I look at it, but it's, it's really true. And then at the same time, this right here is an order block. If you really wanted to, that was your trade. So I know somebody earlier asked me um, about premium or discount. And Crypto Dude just said, what are your thoughts about trading using currency strength meters? I'm going to literally tell you guys what my currency strength meter is right here. We came into a discount after taking out these lows, right? Because if you look on the lower time frames, this right here was a imbalance. We came into it for a London session, which is huge, right? Time and price. London session, right? We came up. We got that previous swing low taken out, right? What do I tell you guys? When we take out some lows and we come back up and we take out that previous swing high, that's really big. That's a breaking structure. It's a market structure shift, like Kishel says. So since we didn't quite take this out, we came back in, all right, filled in the imbalance, shot up, took that out. That's your break in structure, right? Now you're basically just waiting, right? Optimal trade entry is when there's a higher time frame target. For example, if you're bullish, this is your higher time frame target. And New York session gives you that retracement for an entry. So it's really easy. You basically just draw your Fibonacci from the low in London, the low in London, the lowest low in London, London session being between one in the morning and four in the morning. So put that right. All right, so that's your time window, right? One in the morning and four in the morning to get an entry in during London, right? So any order to block, efficiency, uh, fair value gap, rejection block, anything that forms during London session is going to be very key for a New York session, right? So we formed that range from this high to this low, and now you're looking for a premium. So once it goes below 50% of the range, 50% being, this is really important, guys, because you have to understand this. This is what people are doing like the banks are doing at a very, very high level. They're not going to buy this at an expensive level. You have to understand that like the banks aren't going to buy this at a, at a, at a high price. They're going to wait until it reprices below 50% of the daily range. That's what you have to, that's why you have to identify your range that they're working in between breaks down into a premium. So they know that their buys in here below the 50% are going to be at a discount. What happens when they buy at a discount? They can then sell at a higher price. So you have to, that's like the mentality that you have to have. 
that that when you adopt that mentality and you're looking for higher time frame moves, we were we were just working on the the one minute candles. I mean, on the one minute time frame, right? That's what we caught that one minute move. When you're working on the higher time frames, you're gonna have to maximize your risk, meaning it's gonna be bigger stop losses, right? Of course, and you're gonna get bigger take profits, of course. But you have to understand this, like. Anytime there's ever going to be a trade, you always want to be buying either in a premium. I mean, yeah, buying in a discount or selling at a premium. It's going to really improve your probability when you trade. Yeah, my kill zone. So London kill zone. Jonathan said, I, I was taking a trades demo for a test run. Now I can see. Now I see you can trade opening another challenge with your trade this week. And let's do it, bro. The problem I face is that the range can be different depending on which time frame you are on. How do you deal with that? Yes. So exactly. So higher time frames, right? I'll show you my Fibonacci settings in a, in a second, right? So you guys can adopt those. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. Like, for example, like somebody would have drawn this range to this high right and then you would have missed that moving guy and taken out basically it's 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 all in the higher time frame right the higher time frame will show you the overall move right so if you look on the 15 minute or even 30 minute really the reason why i'm a, i'm, I'm, I'm adopt there has to be a reason why you anchor those like i wouldn't have anchored it from here or here like i wouldn't have called that a range because we didn't take out any lows in here, you know? Like we took out sell side in here. We came into this discount that I was saying was on the 15 minute and just tapped into where it came into the 50% right here, right? That now, like once we eliminate these lows and create this new range right here, and we came up, had that breaking structure inside of here that I outlined for you guys, right here once we saw this high get taken out right here and we saw that breaking structure now you know you're bullish and now you know that your range starts from here because you know you had uh institutional sponsorship here so as soon as you see this turn back you're gonna wait really because this if you drew this from here to here to these equal highs right here you waited basically forever for it to drop, right? It never dropped. It never came below 50%. You drew it from here, slowly came down. You had a low, which improved the probability that it would go up, right? Because now you're gathering sell stops. Now you had another low. Swipe the low, boom, came to a premium, and it shot up. So it's all about experience, really, when you're dealing with um, dealing ranges, with the range. Over time, you'll, you'll start identifying it better and seeing the whole move better so now that we took out the slow right and this slow what does this become this becomes your new dealing range so as soon as we see this start turning around right we know the buys in here we're at a discount and they're exiting now taking profits now um at a higher price they can making a profit they're going to want to bring this back down into a discount if it's still bullish to then buy again but this is shooting up a lot. Oh yeah, the FIB settings. Let me show you guys that. So my FIB set, uh, Laura, my FIB settings consist of. Let me go over here. My Fibonacci settings consist of the high, the low, the equilibrium point, and then your premium or discount. Right, it's either a discount or a premium, right? And then these levels here at the bottom or at the top, depending which one you draw it from the bottom to the low or the low to the high, these are your take profit levels, right? So you normally want to take out. So if you get an entry in here, you normally want to take out at this high that you anchor it at about 50%, 75%. And then you let it run to this level, this level, and even this level. And then in rare cases, this level. Once it takes this level out, that's a major retracement. And these levels are usually when you're trading higher time frames, right? So now that you see that, let me 
show you the settings. All right. So my background is clear. I just have my prices and my levels on. So that's my settings right there. You want to make sure you have the negatives in there so that um you have those negative in the indentations. Oh, my bad. I'll give you guys like one minute to get that down, copy it down, two minutes. All right. Just want to make sure you guys got that. Give it one more minute. Yes, exactly. Um, Don. From the range high to the range low. I do think we are going to keep going down on DXY dollar index, meaning gold will keep going up. Had this breaking structure right here. That's why it's shooting up. I should have seen this. Fuck. This was a beautiful fucking trade. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm cursing, but damn. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't like if it comes back in again, but that was beautiful. Tapped right into my level. Oh, wow. That's already up like 20, 10, 15 pips. So we would have been at break even already. So I'm not even going to bother with it. Because if it comes back down, we would have been good. Curse friendly here. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. It's early sometimes. I forget. Yeah, see, it would have been break even right there. If we got in right here, probably. Well, that's okay, as long as we didn't close above below 50%. So you see how we closed below 50%? And now we're breaking down. That's always a confirmation, right? If you're trading of if you're trading a reversal and not a continuation, you're always gonna see that. And you're always gonna see, and you want to do it for yourself, right? You always want to do it for yourself. Swing high, didn't close above 50%. Look at that. So when you see that, it's it's really a confirmation. It's a strong one at that. Because you guys saw as we were trading S P, right? And we're trading that one minute trade that we took down lower. When we got in here, right? And we saw this just come back in here. And I was like, oh, I really don't want to see this come back out. Once we had that strong displacement out, what happened? And I was like, if we close above here, this is probably going to just go up above and we're going to close. It went right into it, right? That's okay. It's okay if we wick it, but we don't want to close above 50%, which we didn't. And that brought us down. Always want to see those confirmations. The only time those are acceptable to disrespect are during news events, as soon as they come out. Because you can have something like this happen and it's okay. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that's all we're gonna do right now. Let me just take one more look. I'm pretty sure everything moved already. 
we don't have any more news until like 10 a.m. And I don't really like trading 10 a.m. We already caught a nice trade. So I think we're gonna call it a day. Call it a day. Gold is selling. I don't even know why. So I'm not gonna bother with it. It was 30 shut up. SP gave us a nice trade. We missed the buy. It's all good. Yep, that's it for today, guys. So I hope you guys took that SP trade and I hope you guys have a great day today. Have a great weekend, guys. See you guys at 2 p.m. Bye.